Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're looking at Strategy Inc. It's uh, quite the story, isn't it? This complete pivot to becoming the world's first, well, Bitcoin treasury company. It really is remarkable. They've amassed this huge Bitcoin position, over 638,000 BTC now. Yeah, but we're not really focused on the common stock today, MSTR. No, not directly. We're digging into something I think much more fascinating from a financial engineering perspective. It's the security they created the STRC. The variable rate series, a perpetual stretch preferred stock. Bit of a mouthful. Huh, yes. STRC is easier. But the core question is, how do you take an asset like Bitcoin, you know, famously volatile, wildly volatile, and build a security on top of it that's designed for stability, aiming to compete with like cash equivalents? That's the paradox we want to unpack. Right. Engineering stability from volatility. So maybe start with the big picture, the strategy behind all this. Okay, yeah. Strategy Inc.'s doctrine, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Buy Bitcoin, hold Bitcoin. Forever, basically. Keep stacking sats, as they say. Exactly. But to do that consistently, they need capital. Lots of it. Yeah. And they realized, you know, not everyone wants the pure volatile exposure of the common stock. They needed different hooks for different kinds of investors. Precisely. So they've built this um, quite sophisticated liability structure. We're calling it a Bitcoin yield curve. A Bitcoin yield curve. Explain that. Well, think of it like layers. You've got the common stock, MSDR, at one end. That's for the growth folks. Full Bitcoin ride. Mm -hmm. Then they layer in instruments like preferred shares. Ah, designed for investors who want maybe less risk, more income focus. Exactly. And STRC, that's positioned right at the, let's say, the short duration, most stable end of this curve. It's specifically tailored for conservative, income-oriented buyers seeking high yield but wanting... Um, perceived stability. Okay. So let's get under the hood of STRC itself. How does the stability engine actually work? It's got a $100 target price, right? The liquidation preference. Correct. $100 per share is the anchor. And it launched with an initial annual dividend of 9.00%. That breaks down to £0.75 per share paid monthly. Cumulative. But there was a twist at the IPO, wasn't there? Yes. Crucial point. It IPO'd at $90 per share, not $100. So for those first buyers, well, you do the math, $9 annual dividend divided by the $90 price. That gives them an effective initial yield of 10%. Nice bump. Exactly. A 10% starting yield. That was definitely part of the initial attraction. Okay. So it starts with a high yield, but the core mechanism, the thing that keeps it near that $100 target, hmm. that's not market forces, right? It's managed. That's the absolute key. The stability isn't inherent. It's actively managed. The board of directors has discretionary power over the dividend rate. It's variable. So walk us through an example. Let's say the market price dips maybe to $95. What can the board do? Simple. They can vote to increase the dividend rate, maybe bump it up from 9% to, say, 9.5% or even higher. Ah, making it more attractive on a yield basis at that $95 price. Precisely. That higher yield pulls in buyers looking for income, increases demand, and that buying pressure pushes the price back up towards the $100 anchor. And the reverse is true, too, I assume. If it trades up to, like, $105. Yep. If demand gets too hot and pushes the price significantly above $100, the board can dial back the dividend rate, lower the yield, cool off demand, and nudge the price back down towards the target. So the stability is literally a product of active board policy. It's synthetic stability. That's a perfect way to put it. Okay. Synthetic. Now, this is where we need to draw a very bright line for you, the listener. Okay. In my name for stability, like a cash equivalent, but STRC is absolutely not like, say, a U.S. Treasury bond. Right. Treasuries are considered risk-free, backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Exactly. STRC is corporate equity. Preferred stock, yes, but still equity in a company. Its ability to actually pay that dividend and eventually the $100 preference. Mm -hmm. It depends entirely on the financial health of Strategy Inc. And Strategy Inc.'s health is overwhelmingly tied to? Bitcoin a single highly volatile asset class. So that high yield, the 9% or 10%, that's your compensation for taking on significant risks. What kind of risks specifically? Issuer Credit Risk Risk Strategy Inc. itself faces financial trouble. Policy risk, the, the board doesn't manage the dividend effectively or changes its policy. And complexity risk, just understanding this unique structure. So fundamentally, investing in STRC isn't just a bet on Bitcoin's value holding up. No, not at all. It's equally a bet on the board's ongoing commitment and their skill in managing this dividend mechanism, especially if markets get really chaotic. You're betting on their policy execution. OK, zooming out then. If this model works for Strategy Inc., if they pull this off long term, 
What are the broader implications? Well, that's the really provocative thought, isn't it? If you can successfully create stable, high-yield income streams securitized from something as wild as Bitcoin. Could you do it with other volatile or hard-to-value assets? Exactly. Imagine trying this with, say, large portfolios of fine art or private equity holdings yeah. or venture capital investments, things that are traditionally illiquid or have lumpy returns. Creating income streams from assets that don't naturally produce them. It could unlock new ways for companies holding these alternative assets to raise capital from income investors. Yeah. But. There's always a but. There's always a but. If this model gets widely adopted, you could be creating a whole new layer of uh, financial complexity mm -hmm. and potentially hidden systemic risk where the perceived stability of these high yield products masks the, you know, the deep underlying volatility of the assets backing them. Something to definitely watch. A fascinating, potentially risky financial innovation. Definitely something for listeners to mull over. Thanks for breaking that down. My pleasure. It's a unique case study.